In this video, I want to give a short introduction to using the Dataspace connector via the Configuration Manager user interface. The UI allows for adding resources to the connector that can then be shared with other participants. Under IDS Resources, we see an overview over all currently registered resources of the connector. To add a new resource, we click the Add Resource button. The first thing we have to add here is the resources metadata. This includes a title, a resource description, a URL pointing to the publisher of the resource, some keywords, a URL pointing to the license under which the resource is published, and lastly a version number and the language. After adding the metadata, we next have to define the resource's policy. From a drop-down menu, we can choose the desired policy type. After selecting a type, a new form will be visible in which the policy can be configured. In this example, we're going to use the interval restricted usage policy and only allow the data usage in April of 2021. After defining the policy, next we have to add the resources representation. That means we have to specify where the data is located. First, we choose a source type, for example, HTTP GET. When choosing this source type, we have to specify the connection parameters to the backend. We can either add a new backend connection or choose an existing one. And last, we can specify the brokers at which the resource should be, should be registered. For the moment, we don't want to register the connector at a broker. So we click on Save and the resource is added to the connector. If later on we decide that we do want to register the connector at a broker, we can do so under Brokers. A quick look at the broker shows that our connector is not yet registered here. So we click the Register button and afterwards our connector is present at the broker. That means it can now be found by other connectors querying this broker. And here we can see that the resource we previously created has also been registered. Another thing we can do via the UI is creating data routes. As we can see here, a route was automatically created when we added the resource. That simply routes the data from the backend to the connector. But of course we can also define routes manually. For example, if we want to route the data through a data app before sending it to the connector. When we click the Add Route button, a new dialog opens up. Here we first specify the backend where the data is located. Afterwards, we can choose an app from the list of known apps and add it to the route. The last thing we need in this route is a connector endpoint to which the data can be sent. To add an IDS endpoint, we have to create another resource. Here we follow the same steps we followed previously. So we add the metadata and next we choose the policy. As we already defined a backend connection in the root, we now only have to choose the source type for the representation. Afterwards we can click on save and then we can connect the backend to the app by specifying output and input and then we can connect the output from the app to the input of the connector endpoint. So now our root is finished and when clicking on save, it will be persisted. Now our new route has been added here as well. The last thing I want to show you is the settings page. By clicking on settings, we can see the complete current configuration of the connector. All of these settings can be modified on this page too to change the connector's configuration via the configuration manager.